Okay, everybody. <coughs> Welcome to another video. If you'll notice, uh, I'm in a different place. I moved out of my house because it was stinky. <laughs> no, uh, I sold my house and we're buying a new house, but the closing date it's later. So anyway, in the meantime, I have this makeshift uh, studio in my in-laws basement. Um, anyway, you know, there's my stuff. Uh, this is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to show you my inking process on this goblin riding a wolf. It shall be beautiful. That's where it would have gone if it was uh, still going, but it's not. Okay, everybody. Uh, goblin on a wolf, riding a wolf rider, wolf rider. I have a few things I want to talk about today, so let's get started. Uh, big thanks to everybody who's subscribed so far to my channel. It's like we're a family now. Um, this is like a family reunion now. Complete with weird uncles um, and those cousins that make you want to hide. Wait, does that happen? I don't know. I don't go to a lot of family reunions. <coughs> um, somebody told me I clear my throat too much. I don't believe them. I think they're a liar. Hey, let's start this by just, uh, I'll explain a little bit of my process again. On this piece, uh, the sketch I did, the red sketch that was done in Clip Studio Paint EX, which is like another name for Manga Studio. It's just... For some reason, if you buy the physical software, like a disc that you would install on your computer, they call it Manga Studio. Um, and if you buy it as a digital download, um, then they name it something different. Uh, I get that. But they do it, and uh, that's how they do it. So I did the sketch in there. Then I printed it out on a piece of paper. Um which I do quite often, but not all the time, for sketches. But I wanted this one to be bigger than my sketchbook. So I sketched in there. And um, <clears throat> photocopy normal, just some heavy photocopy paper that I'm drawing on. But I've told you all that before. Uh, I still get lots of uh, questions about what brushes I'm using, that sort of thing. So this is, listen up, here it is, this is the Kuretake number eight brush pen. I've tried some other brushes. I think I've, this feels like I'm repeating myself, but I feel like people keep asking. So I've tried other brushes. I've tried the Pentel pocket brush. I've tried the Kuretake number 13. I've tried their sable hair brush as well which is, you know, an actual hair of an animal brush tip. Um, I've also tried the Pentel, uh, what is it? I think it's called a scientific or maybe just a fine point brush. It's got that refillable, like the entire body is a refillable ink cartridge or replaceable, I should say, replaceable ink cartridge. You can buy a new one or maybe you can refill it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so I tried that. Um, those are the brush pens I've used that I've tried so far. 
And this one continues to be my favorite because of the lightweight body. It feels to me like more like an actual brush. Uh, the, I like the other ones too, though. I'll use them as well. The Pentel uh, pocket brush pen, I like that one, but the body's heavier, so I feel like it's harder for me to control it. And this one is just nicer to control. I'm not using the stock ink that comes with the Kiritake um, because it's not waterproof. So if, I, if I'm going to use markers, it's going to get all runny and it's going to smear. Yeah, a smear. Anyway, um, so I got the carbon, carbon ink is what it's called, and it's a, a cartridge that's the same size fits these brush pens. Um, and that one is, I, I, what is the term? Water fast, I think is the term, but it won't, it won't uh, smudge or bleed when you put stuff on top of it. There you go. So that's the ink I'm using on this. Um, some people have asked for, they wanted like some instruction on how to use a brush pen. And you know what? I don't know. I, <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just holding it. Okay, all right, here are my tips for using a brush pen. You ready? Uh, take the cap off, make sure the cartridge is in it. Put it um, in your fingers. Now this, uh, this you can change depending on who you are. So I hold it like this. You can see um, I've got this death grip on it between my thumb and my pointy, point, pointy pointer finger and my middle finger. And like I'm gripping that bad boy so hard. You can see that the knuckles... Wait, I stopped. Okay, you can see my knuckle there on my pointer finger is like turning white and the tip is getting all red. So I'm... Uh, this is my death grip um, pen technique. All right, that's patented. Um, I I developed that over years of practice of death grip. No, not true. I lied to you. But it is what I do. Obviously, you can see. But it really doesn't matter how you hold it. Um, I don't think it does, at least. Uh, and it doesn't even really matter what. Um, what type of brush pen you're using? I don't. I mean, honestly, obviously some are better quality, and will. And if you're trying to get like a nice, um, clean line with it, some will will fray, or you know they won't keep a nice fine point. So obviously that would be a problem. Um, but really, if you, I think it's just a matter of getting comfortable with a particular tool, and this is the one I'm comfortable with. And I hold it in the way I'm comfortable. So you just find out what you're comfortable with. So I think it's cool to ask peop artists uh, what tools they use. I think that's cool. Because um, then you can try them out and see if you like them. But more and more... Oh, wait, I'm about to make a line that I hate. Right there! What is that line doing? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I got rid of it before I colored it. But you won't see that in this video. So, it's not what the artist is using that creates the art, um, really, you know. It's not like, if I like a certain person's style, I have to figure out what they're using and then use that same thing and then I'll be able to draw like them. That doesn't, it doesn't work. Plus, you don't want to draw like some, anyway. I'm going off on a tangent, on a rant. A trant. Gent rant. Okay. So, point being, figure out what works for you, but ask other artists what they like and try it out. See if you like it as well. Um, here's a tip, though. Turn your paper. Um, I don't do that enough. Usually I get lazy. I feel like, no, I can make all my lines great with this. Just keeping my paper straight. Uh, but this one I, I specifically decided I needed to get with it. Um, stop being some bogus guy. And um, I started turning my paper because there's a, nat there's a natural way you want to draw a line. Uh, a way that feels natural to your hand. Um, so you got to keep turning your paper to, to use that natural line. 
Does that make any sense? Sometimes my brain thinks of things and it makes perfect sense, and then my mouth gets the message. And I'm like, okay, begin vocal output, um, and somewhere in that process, it just it dies and it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, um, if need be, somebody can translate this video if they'd like and post it. That would be great. Yeah. So, talking about pens again, um, I have thought about doing a video where I'll just show the different pens that I've got and what I like about them and what I don't like about them. Um, so, if that sounds interesting to you, leave a comment and let me know. And I can do a video about that, just going through a few of the different tools. Um, brush pens are not the only thing I use. I've also, occasionally, I'll, I like to use um, multi liner like Micron, Multiliner, or Copic, or, or whatever. Um, I also really enjoy fountain pens, um, but I haven't found it one that I really like um, so far. One that The one that has sold me, that I love. Um, so I'm still on the hunt for a good fountain pen. I've heard some good uh, talk about uh, noodlers, but I haven't, I haven't had the chance to check it out yet. So, uh, if you know any good fountain pens that you like, have a good line, uh, that you can still get a variety of uh, a good variation in the line with, let me know so I can check those out. Uh, see which one uh, tickles my every fancy. All right. All right. Let me tell you a bit about what I've been working on lately. Um so you can get a peek, a glimpse into my illustration life, which is a secret. It's an ancient secret. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I've been doing this uh, freelance illustration for about, I don't know, it feels like over three years now. Before that, I was um, working at a miniature painting studio. Not that the studio was miniature, or that the painters were miniature, but that we were painting miniatures. Uh, the studio was called Blue Table Painting. You can look them up if you don't know about them. Um, they paint miniatures mainly for uh, war games, if you know about those. You know, you, like, you reenact a battle, or you play a, a game that's a battle played out on a table with a bunch of miniatures. Which is one of my secret secret hobbies, secret passions. Anyway, so I was working there for a while. Uh, I was art director for um, the majority of the time I was there. Um, and that was fun. I still like painting miniatures every now and then. And you, you can kind of see, um, I think those those games influenced a lot of what I like to draw as well. I like, I like to draw a lot of fantasy stuff. Um, yeah, so I was working there for a while, and then I quit. Uh, past few years, I've been doing freelance illustration, um, and my passion is telling stories, comics and or picture books. Um, so really, that's what I want to be using all my time professionally to be doing. Um, but for these past three years, my main I, I've mainly been doing just odd freelance jobs. Um, I did a bunch of illustrations for the game... Uh, Dungeon Dice and the various uh, expansions that they put out. That's by Potluck Games. Check them out. Um, they're pretty regularly doing new Kickstarters to expand the game. It's a great game, really fun. And that was that. Those are always fun projects to do. So I've done a few things for them. Um, but now I'm trying to get into the comics and picture books. Uh, so. I've been doing my webcomic, Percival Pun Dragon. You can read that at pundragon.com for a while. Um, and now, now I've got PDFs out of that um, that you can download. Uh, I did my first bit of comic work for uh, Jake Parker's story in Mouse Guard. Got to color that. That was good. It was a good experience. Um, but really, I want to get more more work in the comic and picture book 
side of illustration. That's my passion. I want to tell stories. I want to help other people tell their stories. Uh, so my, what I'm focusing on right now is uh, preparing a picture book that I've got in the makings, and uh, I'm going to be submitting that to literary agents. Try and get an agent. Uh, get that bad boy published and uh, get some more work on that side of things. So, there it is. That's what I've been up to. Thanks for watching the video. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and here I sign CJ. Okay, thanks. Okay. Oh, there you are. Uh, thanks for watching me put an ink brush on a piece of paper today. Um, <laughs> oh, so I want to show you something. Uh, that's not what I want to show you. Let me get it ready. Okay, in case you haven't heard, um, I put up some digital download PDFs um, that you can pick up on my shop. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can go to camkendall.com and then just click on shop, right? Click. Or, there you go. You go to camkendall.storeenvy.com. It'll bring you here. Um, here you can see on the top, there is Art Book, which is the digital collection of my art over the years. Sketches, drawings, doodles, stuff like that. And then there are three, the first three issues of my uh, Percival Pundragon webcomic. Uh, just three bucks each. Um, anyway, you just click and add to cart. And then you can go back, because you're not done. Leap. And you can buy another thing, a like it is. Mm. Yep. Check out. Beep. There you go. Blah, 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 blah. You know how to do stuff from there. Anyway. Um. Thank you again. Peace.